Hello, I'm Dr. John Iskander. Welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today with Dr. Lisa Richardson, Director of CDC's Division of Cancer Prevention and Control. Welcome, Dr. Richardson. Thank you, John. Um, so we're talking today about skin cancer prevention. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if you could start us out by just giving us an idea of the public health importance and the public health burden of skin cancer. Thanks, John. Um, there are about 5 million skin cancers diagnosed in this country per year. About 75,000 of those are melanoma, which is the deadliest type of skin cancer. Um, regarding other parts of the burden, it's about $1.6 billion from the healthcare system to take care of these problems, uh, which are mostly preventable. So, so a very common and a mm -hmm. very expensive uh, condition. Yes, and it's potentially the most and mm -hmm. potentially lethal as well. Yes, as well. Mm -hmm. So when we last featured skin cancer prevention as part of Public Health Grand Rounds, there had just been the release of a call to action from the mm -hmm. Office of the Surgeon General. Yes. I understand we have some uh, progress reports since then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Where do we stand? So as part of our um, call to action working with the Surgeon General, uh, we decided that uh, to do something different, to actually provide progress over the years. So we've done three annual progress reports looking at um, progress that we've made and the recommendations from the call to action. Uh, one example in particular is when we did the um, call to action, there were about 15 or 16 states with laws preventing underage tanning, um, indoor tanning, and now that number has risen to 45. And so we've making quite a bit of progress there to protect children from indoor tanning devices or using those. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, an important and mm -hmm. underappreciated risk factor. Mm -hmm. I think many yes. people are likely aware that sun burns mm -hmm. are, are a risk mm -hmm. factor for skin cancer. Yes. But tell us a little more about both indoor and outdoor tanning and the mm -hmm. risks inherent in that? Well, the, the common misconception is that tanning looks, gives you a healthy look. Um, and so people used to do things like before going to the beach, get a, be you know, a base tan to sort of protect themselves. But any tanning of the skin is damage of the skin. And so any tanning, no matter what age you are, we used to think it was children, but even someone you know, my age in my 50s can, if I get a bad sunburn, can raise my risk of getting skin cancer. Um, and people just don't realize it, that it's something that can happen over your entire life, but especially in children. Well, then it, it is good to hear then that at least on the policy front, we're making some, some, some progress in mm -hmm. uh, limiting access to, uh, to deliberate tanning. Absolutely, and even in that realm for children and um, daycare centers, those types of places, the um, community guide has recommendations there for what should happen at daycare centers to protect children, sunscreen structures um, when, on the playground that when they're playing outside. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I think a lot of people in our audience are going to want to know uh, what they can do mm -hmm. to uh, help, you know, themselves, yes. their families, their, their communities. Right. Uh, I'm going to bring out actually a couple of, a couple of props here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is my uh, certified uh, skin cancer prevention hat yes. given to me by uh, Sharon McKenna with the mm -hmm. Arizona Department of Health who uh, presented in our last session on Grand mm -hmm. Rounds. Uh, sunglasses as well. Yep. Uh, and the way I remember this is through uh, the the phrase "slip, slop, slap." Exactly. Can you can you walk us through those protective measures? Yes. So I think one of the things we preach a lot is sunscreen, and that's the slip, slap, slop part. But the other things that you can do is to wear a hat, a hat with a brim, not a hat with um, like a baseball cap. That still does not protect your neck. Um, long sleeves outside, which um, people don't like that part at all. And also to use shade whenever possible. And to one thing we never do or almost never do is if we're outside sweating a lot, we should actually reapply the sunscreen every one to two hours. Um, and the kids come out of the water, reapply or yourself if you were swimming um, to do that regularly, not just once. So important protective measures. Could you talk a lot about, I think there may be also misperceptions about do these uh, apply to people of all skin types? Specifically, do these mm -hmm. recommendations apply to people of color? 
So it's really hard. So we think, you know, if you're African American with darker skin, that you're not at risk, but that's not true because the, the main reason people are at risk are sunburns. And if you stay outside long enough, almost anyone can sunburn. So if we, um, we should be aware that the, the risk may be lower, but you still need to protect yourself, hat, glasses, sunscreen, you know, cover yourself up. And there is evidence, I think, of some health disparities in the stage yes. at which um, skin cancers are, are diagnosed in, in African Americans, is that correct? Yeah, so African Americans tend to be diagnosed with um, higher stage of um, skin cancer at diagnosis, but one of the problems with that, or what we just talked about, is I think a lot of people are not aware that they're at risk for skin cancer and may see things or um, feel things that they don't follow up on. And providers as well. We think sometimes that people of darker skin aren't at risk either, and we don't um, take it quite as seriously as we should. So that really raises the issue mm -hmm. of uh, health care providers. Mm -hmm. I understand there yes. are some updated recommendations uh, about skin cancer yes. prevention for health care providers. Could you s summarize those for our audience? So for, um, for skin cancer prevention, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force just released um, recommendations on behavioral um, counseling for children, uh, their parents, adolescents, and teenagers. And so what they've done in this latest update is increase the age range for behavioral counseling from 10 years old to 24 years old to six months to 24 years old. And um, so widening the range and also emphasizing that parents and teenagers need to know um, how to protect themselves. What we've all talked about, wear a hat, wear your sunscreen, um, those types of activities. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that's a pretty good summary. Again, mm -hmm. providers can be involved in counseling. They can be yes. involved in assessing for risk factors. They can right. counsel against any yes. form of uh, deliberate uh, tanning. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we've also touched on uh, what can be done. Let, can we talk a little bit more actually about um, on, on the com community level, yes. uh, what are, um, what is the skin cancer prevention kind of lens on um, actions that can be taken at a community-wide level? So the, the main things at the community level are with providing shade structures. For instance, where we live here in Decatur, I've noticed that all the pools here have the shade structures. Some of the um, daycare centers have put up playgrounds with shade over the jungle gyms, those types of things. Um, and just to be aware of where you are, trying to get the community more involved um, and understanding why we need these so that you know it'll be approved. What you said earl earlier, policy, the policy solutions are going to help everyone. So those are the ones that um, we need to pursue. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you for this very um, comprehensive overview mm -hmm. of, of skin cancer prevention from mm -hmm. the, the, the personal to the professional yes. to the wider mm -hmm. community level. Thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. Thank you, Dr. Iskander. Please join us next month for Beyond the Data. <laughs>